<laughs> G'day everyone and welcome to Aussie Tech Ed's episode 627, 4th of April 2019. How are you doing? Hope you had a good week. It uh, certainly is getting cooler again, isn't it? Which is good in a way. Like Remember like last week was just like one last big pop of heat uh, for us anyway in, on the Gold Coast and it got up to about 32 or you know 35 and then this week is down to 17, 18. But it's all good. It's nice to have some cool weather. We are brought to you by athwebhosting.com.au. Uh, you can get all your hosting needs through us. The servers operate on SSD drives, immediate activation. SSL certificates, Aussie support, domain registration, easy install, Joomla, WordPress, WordPress Andrew Paul. Uh, and also brought to you by startnewcompany.com.au. Register your company and your ABN fast, easy and direct with ASIC. All docs are provided straight to your inbox within about 10 minutes. And, uh, and they're stored, stored on the Start New Company servers pretty much forever in a day. If you want to come back and, you know, you, you've lost your printouts or you've lost your company documents, you can come back and grab them back out again if you like. Uh, you're able to also brand your documents with your, your firm's name if you are a firm. Coming soon, a, oh, ABM, we've, oh, we've already, they've already done that. Uh, so coming soon, tax file, and they've done that too, and trust. So good stuff, they're on fire. All right, uh, you can get us on the Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Aussie Techheads, youtube.com forward slash Aussie Techheads. And uh, you can uh, send us an email. You can send me an email, glenn at aussietechheads.com.au. Now, also, if you're on the Facebook Live, you can join us live if you want to phone us. You can come in straight into the, uh, the, the, the panel area, so to speak, if, you're on the, if you want to. You ha- just have to call one of the numbers that are in the Facebook Live stream. So just to give it to you, it's 0280152088. It will just ask you for a meeting room number, which is up on the Facebook. You punch that in and uh, give us the last two digits. Post the last two digits or comment your last two digits of your phone number on the fa- in the Facebook live feed stream posty thing and so we know that it's you and because it, it's all it comes up on my screen of phone numbers so if you go over your phone number is in 55 and you push 55 next to your name in Facebook and your name is John I'll go well, he's John because that's his number's 55 all right we got we've got quite a few things uh, to talk about this week but before we just get there, uh, the AussieTechRadio.com. I nearly forgot it. Don't forget that. Grab your TuneIn Radio app, cross-platform, load it up, and uh, search for Aussie Tech Radio. Wall-to-wall, back-to-back Aussie podcasts. So that's all good. New shows every Friday. If there's something you want, to, want us to talk about, send us an email or put it on the Facebook page. All right. Let's uh, see who we've got on the show this week. We've got Jordan first this week. Hey, Jordan. Hey. Look at you. I'm first, huh? Yeah, you are. <laughs> What's been going on? Oh, not a great deal, actually. I've oh, yeah? been tinkering a little bit. I've had a bit of time this week. I've kind of my work is all kind of coming to a a slowdown now. It gets really busy over the fist, uh, the festive season, and then we come up to April and right. kind of, you know, you get over Easter, and then really footy season kicks in, which I'm sure you know about. Yeah, and then um, everything kind of gets cold and quiet. So are you <laughs> until s- about November? Are you so s- we'll be tucking in for the, uh, the the colder months. Are you saying your festive season goes till April? Well, yeah, pretty much. It, well, <laughs> it doesn't really make it to April. There's a bit of a gap, probably end of probably around the end of March, or kind of early, end of end of Feb, early March. It's kind of a bit of a gap, and then it kicks. You, you get a, like a little bit of a last run at, at, at Easter with people having their festivities, yeah, and then or, or whatever it is that they're doing <laughs> their events and and whatever, yeah, and then family dues and stuff, and then that's it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the same because I, I kind of I do my music with my band gigs and all that sort of stuff and we get really busy kind of around November. Right. It goes right through Christmas, New Year's, right through to Easter and then it goes quiet. Ah, oh, it's a good season. Oh, it's a good season. <laughs> and the same, the funny thing is in my spare time, my cousin runs a cool room business and I've been delivering cool rooms. Right. Like big trailer size cool rooms, fridges and freezers and for right. festivals. Are they mobile? Like mobile ones, big walk in cool rooms. And mm-hmm. there's a couple on trucks as well that I deliver a couple of those too, just in, in my, my spare time. You should time. just make them part of your rig in the summer. Yeah, I reckon. <laughs> and he's, 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 it's funny, he's exactly the same. He, he's busy right through the same time as the music season. Cause that's I suppose when that's when it's hot. Yeah. Yeah. And then goes into quiet time and people start putting their beer in their fridges at home and watch the footy instead. That's right. Know? That's right. Uh, and uh, here's someone that doesn't watch the footy, uh, unless it's round. Hey, Joe, how are you going? Yeah, good, thanks. Yeah, no, good. I don't watch any rugby league. I'm not a big fan of rugby league. No, oh, well, that doesn't matter. We we love soccer as well. Um, all I keep hearing is about Manchester United. What's going on with them? They're some. Oh, look, no, they lost their last game. It wasn't one of their better performances, but um, hopefully they uh, they win against Barcelona the next uh, next game they play. Right, right. How do you consume your footy? Have you got KO or something like that? 
I use it on Optus Sport. Ah, oh, that's right. That's right. I knew it was something like that. Yeah. Have you had a look at KO? I haven't had a look at KO. I have heard of it, but I haven't had a look at it. Do you know anything about it? Uh, I haven't used it, but all I know is that it, uh, and look, I can't even tell you if it does soccer. I'm sure it does, though. It's, uh, I think it's part-owned or owned by Foxtel. Uh, the good thing about it, from if you're like into a lot of sports or if there's games on at the same time, I think you can have four different games on the screen at the same time uh, and just like, with one focused on the audio. Uh, so you can have a look, you know, you can see four going. It's all streamed, I think 25 bucks a month. And I think that might give you two screens. 35 might give you three screens. So that's like, say, three devices you can watch it at once. Stream it to your Chromecast or whatever. Uh, I think it's pretty good. Uh, I've just got Foxtel at the minute. Uh, so I don't really need to, to do it. And now that the Foxtel Go will Chromecast, I can now Chromecast footy to my TV from my phone through through the Foxtel Go app which also is now it, it Chromecast in HD, and I don't even have a HD box, so that's what I do. So I don't need the KO, but uh, yeah, might have a look at it, Joe. Sounds all right. Was that a good wrap? Yeah, sound, sounds really good. <laughs> Jimmy, thing, I'm guessing that you got to really watch with these sort of things, whether you've, um, you've got the sport that they subscribe to. I mean, you, you get Foxtel, for example. They don't have the – I'm talking soccer here. They don't have the Champions League. So it would be – if you really want the Champions League, you'd have to go to the sport. Now – yeah, I'm not sure whether KO has that as well. You might have to look into that first. Right. I'm just trying to look up on the. I'm trying to get it up on the on the web now, so we can have a look at it. But do you think I can find it? I just I might have to Google it because it might not be spelled how I'm just trying to put a dot here. Dot KO. Yeah, so oh, I mean, KO you know, Sports. If you get people that are like um, non the subscribers or non Foxtel subscribers, and they want to get that, which is probably a good idea, you know, you just stream everything. You just got to make sure that you you do know that. The um the service is provided, you know. Um, I I I don't know whether they provide rugby league, for example. Yeah, it does have rugby league. Uh, I'm just having a look. It's got see, so it's got. I can just up here it had a lot of a list of different sports. And uh, you can tell me. Can you see that screen there? You can tell me if there's a soccer. There's a Hyundai A League. What's I don't know what that is. Formula yeah, One. Yeah, it looks like it's the uh, NBL. Yeah, there's heaps of them. There's NBL. La- Whatever that is, La Liga. Basketball league. Oh, okay, and Bun Bun Bundesliga. <laughs> A- AFL. Oh, there's tennis. Yeah, so that, that, it looks like oh Masters Golf, WSL, whatever that is. But you might be right. Maybe your little soccer is only on the Optus. I can't see too much soccer. Yeah, apparently in Australia, mostly the the soccer rights, especially when it comes to the um, the Champions League. And uh, Premier League, I think mm. Optus holds the rights to that. Yeah. Oh, here's a full list of sports. Here we go. I wonder if this will just give us anything, but because uh, it'd be interesting to, to find out. Uh, well, it's got over 50 sports. Syria boxing, extreme esports, dart cycling, cricket, Formula One, golf, gymnastics, rugby league, motorsport, blah, 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 blah. Doesn't say soccer. Yeah. So you might be right. You might have to stick with your uh, thingo. But all right. Now enough of KO. Let's uh, move on into something more, a bit more juicy, and I'll uh, I'll kick off with uh, MB- we mentioned this a little while ago, but MBN Co technicians miss overall a whole of Australia, admittedly, but it's four hundred and sixty nine appointments a day. Now last year, from memory, they uh, they decided that MBN will pay the the uh, the RSP twenty five dollars for missed appointments each and every one. So that's going to add up. Uh, they said between the first of July. 2018 and 20th of February this year, the total number of missed technical appointments was 114,093. They classify a misappointment, uh, a situation where the technician doesn't attend the premises within an agreed window of time. And we all hate those. You know, it's uh, anywhere between 8 and 12 or 12 and 5. So you sit around all day long and they don't show. Uh, they say, though, the actual number of missed appointments rose, the ratio of kept to missed appointments remains the same. Essentially, 91% of appointments were not missed. MBNK will pay, yeah, 25 bucks, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so, yeah, look, I just thought I'd just bring another MBM one. Like, I am live for MBM at the moment, but I still haven't turned over. i got, uh, yeah, just still thinking about it, waiting for other people up the street to have a go, see what it's like. I can't lose me 115 down, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, but, yeah, so... um. That's what MBN's up to. Anyone agree, disagree with that? That's a fair bit, few appointments there missed, but um, there's not that much. That is a fair few appointments. Um, yeah. 
Not much I'm, to really, I'm really say. I'm surprised <laughs> yes. that there's people struggling to get a hold of NBN. Yeah. But you said you're on it, didn't you? So, yeah. No, not yet. Not yet. But, oh, uh, you're not? Not yet. Yeah. yeah but, how long is it going to take? <laughs> oh, I don't know, mate. One, oh, oh, it's live at the house now since like last week or something. But um, yeah, I think I mentioned oh, you've it. You've got it to the. You've got it there if you want it. You just haven't connected it yet. Yeah, because no one's given. I don't want to go back over, it, but I think because I mentioned it before. But no one's given me a straight answer. As soon as the NBN goes on, does Foxtel go off or go on? Telstra says it goes off. Foxtel is saying it go off, and other ISPs are saying it stays on. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so anyway, that's why that's the main reason. But anyway, the Foxtel the Foxtel runs over the NBN then, does it? Well, it runs on that coaxial cable. So and Foxtel right. Foxtel's trying to go all satellite because apparently because now that the the pits or whatever they're all you know Telstra sold them back to the government or to the government now that Foxtel has to rent those rent the use of those that cable again or has to rent mm. the use of that cable. So they're trying to go all satellite. Yeah, it makes sense. But yeah, but all right. Um, what's uh, what do you got cooking this week, Jordan? Uh, I wasn't prepared for you to throw one at me just yet, but I can I can have a look and see what I've got. Um, well, Lenovo. Yeah, I can touch on this one. Lenovo's design for foldable smartphones is one of the more unique we've seen so far. I'm not going to read the whole story; it'll take forever. But what it basically is is it. Um, kind of you threw it at me sorry foldable form factors are all the rage right now amongst smartphone manufacturers with official introductions of such devices having already been seen from the likes of samsung and huawei to cite just a two uh, just a few examples however plenty of other manufacturers likewise have foldable handsets uh designs of their own under consideration with such designs having leaked from companies like xiaomi and oppo and now it seems lenovo is working on a design of its own separate form um, sorry, it's own separate from the forthcoming Motorola Razr um, expected this summer. Blah blah blah. Uh, based on the new, uh, based on the newly disclosed patent, it seems that Lenovo prefers a clamshell design that avoids the vertical book-like fold we've seen in in, in mm. models like Samsung. Um, uh, specifically, the Lenovo appears to be uh, pondering design-wise is yeah. Well, as it says, a clamshell where the bottom. Uh, portion of the phone curls up when closed it's got kind of got like a an almost rounded almost like you know the windows um you know the windows what is it windows book microsoft book it's got the rounded kind of oh yes on it. it's kind yep. of fold kind of rolls up yeah kind of in in the picture i don't know if you can see that there uh kind of curls up right uh, to reveal to reveal a secondary display um yeah, it says in here that the image, I don't know if, if, if you've got the image up there or not. So, yeah, it's kind of a little bit of a different kind of design instead of being like the book, mm. kind of like a, like kind of flips down. You know, the old phones used to flip down the keyboard. But you've still, well, I, suppose, I suppose it's not actually creasing, isn't it? It's more like, it's, that looks like a bit more of a roll, but. It's more of a curl, yeah, like a roll. I don't yeah. know. Is it, are these going to take off? Like, I don't know. I suppose. Oh, I, I think it's good to see some different. Different yeah. ideas, rather than we're all just being stuck with one thing. Mm. My only concern is that the screen. I'll, what I like about the, the the Samsung ones and the Huawei ones is that they actually fold and protect the screen. You know? Yeah, right. Yes. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So who knows? We'll see. We'll I see. Mean, that one, you could almost just hook it on your pocket. <laughs> well, you probably could. Yes. Now, yeah. um, yeah. so that's one small story. Yeah. Now, while you were doing that story, I noticed someone did come into our waiting room, but they took off. So I, oh. <laughs> you couldn't handle the couldn't handle the weight that that phone call well, costed you too much. Nerves. <laughs> Maybe the nerves got the better of them. Oh, the cost of mobile calls these days. <laughs> but look, don't, don't right. be nervous. Yeah, don't be nervous. If anybody wants to come on and talk, don't be nervous. We're not going to batter you or embarrass you or, or anything like we that. We just have to wait for an opportune moment to bring you in. That was all. So uh, ring back and put your last two digits up on the Facebook. Have another, yeah, have another go. All right. Uh, what was? What do you think about the the foldable phones? Joe, is it is that up your alley? Would you buy one? No, yeah, that's something definitely I'll be uh, be getting. Um, I quite like the idea of having a bigger screen. My eyes aren't as good as they used to be, so I can actually make the text a little bit bigger. Yeah, yeah. So I know what you mean. So you don't have a a, a watch then? Is that I, I I do have a watch, but I barely use it um, for notifications and stuff because I need to have my glasses on. Yeah. Um, to see the screen, and you know what. Um, 
I don't always wear my glasses. I only need it just for reading. So mm. and, uh, well, that's the, that can be a bit of a problem sometimes. Yeah, that's the main reason why I haven't got the watch. Is because yeah, you would, you'd never be able. I'd never be able to read it. But anyway, that's uh, that's how that goes. Uh, all right. So I was just going to say on Facebook it says that Tim it looks like was going to come in. Oh. And he wanted to have a he wanted to have an opinion on the um, MBN HFC. Oh yes, talk about it. So, well, yeah. if, if you're, you're welcome to come back, Tim, if you change your mind, come back, Tim, and just hold on, and we'll bring you in at the right time, and you can tell us your uh, your 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 experience with the uh, NBN, if you like. Um, all right, uh, let's go, Joe. What have you got this week? What have you been hunting down? Uh, this is something that's been in the news for a few months now, but apparently Google is starting to shut down some of its um, Google Plus social network. Hmm. Yeah, so I heard about that the other week. They were they start shutting it down. Yeah, apparently Google has uh, officially started the process of shutting down and deleting all of consumer accounts on its Google Plus social network. Um, and it's been started since a couple of days ago. Right. Uh, the Google says the reason it is being phased out is due to low usage and because it has been turned into something of a security liability for Google. Um the company uh, disclosed two significant data leaks that could have exposed information for tens of millions of Google Plus users um, to outside developers as well. Yeah, I remember, I don't know, you probably don't remember too much, but they really, really tried to push this Google Plus when they first brought it out to the point that they said it it gave you better SEO for your website if you installed the Google Plus Plus. Uh, link onto your site because it all supposedly was going to marry up with uh, Google Places and Google My Business and all this sort of stuff. So there's a lot, like, there'd be millions of websites out there with this little Google Plus, <laughs> the Google Plus uh, link and, and icon still there, I'd imagine. Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, the, I have seen it around a few times and, and in the beginning it was something that was really, you know, interesting, you know, um, that came out. Mm. I, I saw a couple of screenshots of Google Plus today, and the screenshots I saw was nothing like what I remember it was. I, th- I thought it was quite boring. Like the screenshots I saw of it was a sort of like a Facebook look and feel, but uh, that's not what I remember. I just remember just big squares of photos and pictures, and yeah, it, it was never going to be a Facebook killer. No, it wasn't going to be a Facebook killer. I, I actually used it for a little bit for my Joe the Gadget Man. Um, oh right. Page. And, yeah. and, and it's more or less, it's more of a place where you can actually uh, discuss, like Facebook, you can put up links and put up photos. Um, you can, uh, you know, you can create groups and you can all talk about the same sort of topics. Mm. Um, yeah, but for some reason, um, Google's decided to close it down and they reckon that it's been kept secret for months, um, that Google's decided to close it down um, and it's going to be closed down in April, which is now, rather than in August because of the the the, uh, the vulnerability of the security that it's got. Yes. Apparently, the, uh, a, there was no evidence that um, any of the developers were aware of the bugs or or anything that was took advantage of them or any of them that took advantage of the bugs. Um, so by the time they released all the information, the API for these particular services were already cut off. Yeah. The couple of stats... Uh, there, I'm not sure if you had these stats or not, Joe. Uh, but a couple of stats was that it was created in June 2011. It was an invite-only platform, as they, you know, trying to stir up the 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 angst for it all. Uh, it had many of the features that you know other social networks had: photos, blah blah blah. The consumer version of Google Plus currently, and well, until it just was recently shut down, had a low usage and engagement. 90% of Google Plus user sessions were less than five seconds. <laughs> so I don't know why yeah, you do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, could, I could resemble it to a bit like Twitter. You know, you go there, you have a quick look and you take off. It wasn't something that you stayed on for, you know, an hour or two or all day. It was one of those things that... Mm. Uh, that's how I can resemble it too. Now, there's a thing... During, while I was reading all these things, there's a, a thing that popped up there's a, a google cemetery have you heard of that uh no i haven't no. Tell me about it. <laughs> have you heard of the google cemetery jordan i'll show you i'll show because I, I there's two there's no, one i haven't heard of it but they keep killing off every part of their you know services so i'm sure there's something you wait until you have a look at this thing if it's, it's anything like pet cemetery i'm sure it'll be back <laughs> it's killed by google.com and you just don't believe how many there are 
They, there's just a list of them. They're all all up is 155. Uh, you got things topping this list here, killed by Google. Google Fusion Tables, uh, a thing called Fabric, uh, Inbox by Gmail. We we heard of that. Yeah, I got a story on the Inbox one. Yeah, uh, YouTube video annotations. It just goes on. There's well, there's 150 of them. Um, what, what what's the oldest one? Let's see. We'll go right down to the end and see what the oldest one is that they've killed off. Uh, well, that uh, rightly. Killed over 12 years ago, Rightly was a web-based word processor. Google Answers. Killed over 12... Hey? Google Desk, Google Desk Bar. Where's that? 13 years ago, at the very, very bottom. Desk very Oh, bottom. yeah? 13 years ago, Desk Bar was a small inset window on the Windows toolbar and lets users perform searches without leaving the desktop. No. Oh. So it was over four years old. Oh, that was over two years old. What rightly didn't make it. Twelve months old. Google Video Play. There's heaps of them. Hello, mm. what, Wave would be in there somewhere. I remember all that. On to Cloud Fix. Yeah, Bump Top. Bump Top was a what? Bump Top was a a skeuomorphic desktop environment app that simulates the normal behavior and physical properties of a real world desk and enhances it. But there's also another one I came across called the GC Cemetery. Here's the G. It's a bit more uh, colourful, the GC Cemetery, which is, I'll give you the link in a second. The G. Oh, no, that's the gcemetery.co. So there you go. You get nice little pictures of tombstones with all the <laughs> with all the stuff in them. So yeah, you can the, get you the can, G Cemetery. Is what you said? Yeah, gcemetery.co. You can also put your email address in and subscribe. That's that's a good spot. The yeah. G spot there. <laughs> the G spot. You can put. You can <laughs> subscribe so you get emails next time they kill something off. You'll be first to know. Mr. Jingles. There we go. What's Mr. Jingles? A warning message indicated that the service will end on March 7th. After this date, the navigation bar will only feature your profile. I mean, whatever. You should Google it and see if there's a Microsoft one. I wonder if they've got, they'd have got. they have something for sure. Mm. They've killed off heaps as well. Yeah, so there's a couple of little sites to play with. Um, yeah. Was there any more with that one, Joe? Oh, no. The only thing I just wanted to add to that was that um, if you have any... Google Plus accounts, and you want to keep some of the data, you should actually go to. Um, there's a link that we're going to put in our show notes that you should go there and, and download your data because once they remove it, you can't get it back. Mm. So, um, the link that uh, is going to be in our show notes um, will actually show you how to download your data off that um, in a few steps. Oh, nice. And, um, if you don't, yeah, otherwise, you don't actually get them anymore they'll be gone and you can't get it back did you have you did you bother to download yours no i didn't you probably got all the videos anyway on your on your hard drive it's uh yeah well i guess some people probably spend a lot of time you know pimping it out so if you're one of those people not yeah, like... basically everything that i've got on there i've got as a backup anyway mm. um yeah you know, I, I, there's no specific groups of friends or or any chats or anything like that that i'm you know actively involved in at the moment so they can all be removed if they want i think as i was just to oh, quickly finish up on this one because as i was quickly reading about that thing closing and that it's they sort of mentioned the same problems that i had with it was like you know you, you signed up uh, it, it had to be your real name i didn't have a problem with that uh but then uh it was just so you just didn't know where you were it's still this bit the same you know with google places and google my business and all this sort of stuff there's just so many things that you that you've got to that belong to google you've got to try and get them all under the one name and share them between the people in your organization it just got to, it was too much and google plus was part of it but there's that site joe how to download your data from google so that's a, that's a verge article that'll be on the in the show notes all right let's go uh back up to the Top of my list and see what see what else I've got. I have got oh payphones. You remember a payphone? You guys remember payphones? <laughs> I'm sure you do. The the grey yes. ones. That uh, was the only way of getting to communicate with somebody on a Friday or a Saturday night. That's right. There's not many of them left, but there are more than 160. No, there's not. I read that wrong. There's there are more than 16,000 payphones across the country at, at the moment, and despite the increasing use of the mobile phones. There were 13 million calls from payphones last year. Uh, 200,000 of those were triple zero calls. So how do you like those figures? Uh, but anyway, so why am I telling you all this? I'll tell you because Telstra is giving them a bit of a facelift. They're going to uh, make new ones. Apparently for the 
bit of a facelift, first time since 1983, which is when their last major upgrade was. So, so far, only 34 have been done. They've got a way to go. Been installed in Melbourne. So, Jordan, you'll be down there. You'll be able to see them first. Telstra acknowledged that there were concerns about the size of the Pace phones, which are 15 centimetres wider. Oh, no. That's half a, half a school ruler. <laughs> meaning and apparently they said that they were 15 centimeters wider because they had to accommodate more space for the fiber connections and equipment so anyway they're only going to be installed in non-pedestrian thoroughfares uh they added that there was more advanced digital payphones are expected in the rollout in 2020 it's envisaged that over time new pay oh, this is a quote from telstra it is envisaged that over time the new payphones will provide a number of additional services for the community including mobile phone charging, Wi-Fi access, as well as providing a space for communicating everything from emergency alerts to a range of content services, such as public transport information to city maps, weather, tourist advice, information on nearby, blah, 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 blah. These people can talk. But anyway, that's the, that's the guts of it. So, uh, I don't know. What do, you, what do you think of that look of, the, look of those, Joe? Any good? Yeah, they look all right. I mean, I've seen quite a few of them around um, uh, the place now. They've got that little pink box at the top that indicates that it's a Wi-Fi access point. So if you're on a Telstra network and you subscribe to that system, you can actually get free Wi-Fi. Yes. Yeah, that's right. That's called, uh, I'm not sure what it's called. But, Telstra but, Air. That's it. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, Telstra Air. But you haven't seen the these new ones. They, they're like a like on a, like an advertising board. They've probably got the same uh, silver, you know, silver phone at the front but they've got a big screen a big little lcd screen above it and a little awning obviously to keep the the rain off but so i think it's just a and it pretty much you could just say it's an addition of a screen above it really uh there's that's there it's not enclosed into a booth or well, the one that i'm looking at isn't uh it's just out in the open so everyone can hear your business uh yeah so that screen i reckon it'd be touch screen you seen any jordan no only the old ones yeah. Man, and I'm always looking out for Telstra Air because I've got that on my phone. Although I just upgraded my plan to a 30 gig, so I haven't kind of really needed it. But yeah, usually watch out for them. Weren't you supposed to be able to like turn your home modem and become part of the Telstra Air network? And they're all they're all do they all do that now. Every home modem does it, and the only way you can access Telstra Air is if you turn on your Telstra Air at home and and share the service. Well, so I... basically, if you offer it. You can use it. Well, I go into my modem, but it's turned off. I don't think there's a way to turn it on. That's what I was. Yeah, curious. and if you turn it on, yeah, then Telstra Air will be active for you to use elsewhere. On oh, your phone. okay, right. Yeah. Well, Otherwise, look, you won't. You, you, if you don't have it on your modem, you don't get access. I've never you, um, used it. It's kind of a you scratch my back, I scratch your back kind of thing. I used it in the early days, but like, like as you just said, you got thirty gig to play with a month. Like, you never really. Well, I only had two gig at one point, and it wasn't enough. Yeah, right. Um, but if you and you know, and the kids can install the, the Telstra Air app on their phones, which they have, mm. and and I've got them signed into it as well on the home with the home MBN username and password. So every time they're near Telstra Air, they've only got a gig on their phones with their mm. plans. Every time they're near Telstra Air, it works. Yeah, that's pretty good. One of them's even got. Telstra Air outside one of their friends' places or something. So every time they go there, they're using it. <laughs> nice. What about you, Joe? Any Telstra Air experience? Uh, only when it was available in the very beginning, and they gave it free to everybody for a month. Mm. Uh, yes, I actually loved that because you used to go to you know shopping centres, and there were some in the shopping centres, and there were some at the car parks, um, areas where the service wasn't really good. Um, yeah. Um, you know, you can. I used to use it a lot because when I was, I was actually in Melbourne at the time when the, the free trial was on, and I used to back up all my data rather than using the mobile network. I used to back it up to the cloud. It was great. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I suppose you could, yeah, just go and um, take your laptop if you had big stuff to do. I think I've only, re I only really connected, yeah, in the trial with my mobile and uh, what well, you listen to a song or something. Big whoopie do. But, uh... I tried to connect to the neighbours one for all my tenants one of my rental properties. Oh. So I tried to get like a, like a, a phone or whatever to connect to the neighbors, <laughs> the neighbors, um, Telstra air. Yeah. And then kind of, and then shared it across a router in the <laughs> property for all the people in the house. Every time they came over to use Telstra air shared from, you know, one house to another. <laughs> did it work? Um, it did, but it was just slightly out of range. So it kept dropping in and out and we gave up. If we'd been, 
you know, a, a, another few metres closer, it would have worked perfectly. You needed uh, some some heavy duty uh, rowdy routers and senders and stuff like that. Yeah, you, you got to get the kind of you know the ones that you know you can connect to the internet like a repeater. So yeah. you connect to the uh, to the connection via Wi-Fi, but then you also send signal out via another Wi-Fi. So it's kind of a repeat a Wi-Fi repeater is what we use. Yes. Now you need. Uh, look, I'm going to show you what you would and have needed. And then let it do its own kind of DHCP in the repeater, so that you have a whole separate network of people yeah. who can use the internet. I was going to show you what you need, and I don't know if I can, but there's these things, and uh, the that guy that was ringing in before, uh, Tim, he put me onto these things. The 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 Unify products. He said he's coming back. Oh, okay. So well, he's got two things to talk about now. So the Unify products, uh, I'm just trying to look for one that will, like you've got, you can have like virtually like satellite dishes, like this one here. And you can you can send your, your Wi-Fi all around the show. Yeah, look at those things. They're like actual satellite dishes. So you got one at one end, one at the other end, and you send it to yourself or to or whatever. It's got to be pretty much line of sight. But, Not uh, very cheap though. <laughs> Uh, I, I think you'd be surprised, but uh, that fibre one would be. But the other good thing that t uh, Tim was showing me when I was talking to him was that there's a, on this Unify site, there's actually like a, you can punch in your location uh, where you are and where you want to send to, and it'll tell you the best product to use. Like, it's amazing. And it'll say, oh, well, you need one of these here and one of those there. And then it'll give you a little graphical of exactly uh, if there's any mountains or anything in the way or, or whatever. Nice. It's, it's, yeah, it's really good. They're really good well, stuff. Nice. My family's got like a 14-acre property with two houses on it that has internet connection to one and not to the other, and we were going to do that, but mm. it kind of got a bit expensive with the Wi-Fi, so we ended up just getting the tractor out and digging a trench and laying down 150 metres of Cat 6. Yeah. <laughs> and we joined, the, we joined the two properties together. We made sure we had another switch about halfway so, to so give a bit of a power boost. Well, yeah, now gonna... they get, so now they get internet right across. Mm. I was going to say, what was the what's the the range on a Cat Six cable? It'd be probably about a hundred meters. Is that usually that about a hundred right? meters for Cat Six? Yeah. yeah, and then you start dropping off. But we we just so happened to, at a hundred meters, we just so happened to have a cubby house, right? At a hundred meters, so <laughs> right. we kind of put the Cat Six under the cubby house, yeah, and then and then brought it up into the cubby house, put a switch in. And then went back down and went the rest, the the, the extra twenty or thirty meters or whatever it was. Mm. Yeah, so I, it worked worked well. <laughs> look, I've got a, I have got a couple of these little Unify, just little home ones, and they mesh together. That, that, look, they do work really good. If you if you're gonna <laughs> if you want to Wi-Fi your house, you can't really go wrong. And just have a look at these Unify things. Uh, U N I F I from Ubiquity. And let me get the yeah. Is that is this what their website is? Unify. Tim says on Facebook Airlink. Oh, all right. That's it, air link there. That's the one, Tim. Try now. Yeah, that's the go. All right, so have a look at that if you're doing that. Oh, there you go. Look at that. You put in your where you are and blah, 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 and away you go. That's what I'm looking at. Uh, okay, let's move off that. Uh, well, Joe, did you have anything to say about Wi-Fi, your Wi-Fi experiences? Are you, are you meshing? Are you just routing or boosting? Um, at the moment, I've been looking into um, uh, Samsung Smart Things. Oh um, yes, I have a bit of a story on that later, but I'm looking. In, I've been looking at that over the last week. Right, uh, I find that really interesting. It's got the, a Wi-Fi, which is like a Wi-Fi mesh network. Yeah, and it's also got a Smart Things um, hub built into it as well. But I'll, I'll talk about that. That's something that I'm looking at at the moment. All right. Well, it uh, looks like Tim's back. No, he's, gone. he's just gone. Tim, stay on there. I was going to get you back after I spoke to Joe. All right. Anyway, let's uh, <laughs> let's move on again. Uh, Who's turn? Joe. What else are you scrounged up this week? Okay, this is something I was going to talk about. It's only a little short thing. Um, you may have heard of a little company called Scooty, S-C-O-O-T-I. Um, apparently, that's like a um, a two-wheel taxi ride oh, all right. uh, service. So it's like a bit of an Uber, but for a, a motorbike. Right, okay. And yeah, so where, apparently, where... Sco Scooty Taxi Service um, is launched in Melbourne last week um it allows people to hail a scooter via an app and travel around the city on two wheels right oh so yeah. are they yeah so that you can just what pick them up 
on the street and just ride them. You, well, I suppose you, you can't get taxied around, can you? So they are no, self- it's, it's slightly different to that. It's not like those bikes you leave lying around. This is actually someone comes up with a bike and, and takes you, picks you up. And oh, it is a taxi, a right. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Yeah, so the company claims that it's a service is much cheaper and greener and quicker than uh, travelling by car. The, car. the company app connects uh, scooter drivers with people that are looking for a ride um, pretty much the same way as like Uber drivers. Um, you won't need to worry about bringing a helmet. Um, the scooter driver is obligated to provide one for you. Right, right. Are they all yeah. these old type of looking scooters, do you know, or is it just... Um, I don't actually know the um, the laws and what they are, but I'm guessing uh, they have to have some sort of regulation on, mm. on what kind of bikes they are. They have to be obviously safe. Um, the one that, um, you know, all, apparently all drivers are, are specifically specifically uh, trained, uh, insured and certified under the Government Legislation Act. Right. Um, they mainly work around uh, the CBD of Melbourne and... Um, in most roads, they're about around about forty kilometres per hour. You'd probably liken it, liken like them to uh, mopeds. That's what they're, they're not motor motorbikes. They're like mopeds, aren't they? I'm not, I'm not familiar with that one. What a moped? Moped? Yeah, that's what. What's a moped? Yeah, one of those. <laughs> that's what they oh, are. one of those helmets. No, yeah. no, the bike. The bike. Oh. That's what they call a, a moped. They must okay. be just. There must be all the rage up here. There's, there's... Yeah, plenty of them in Queensland. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I don't know. I haven't heard much about those. I see. There, yeah, like that's a moped. They're mopeds. That... Oh, okay. So similar. Okay. To that. It's like it's like a like a scooter then. Yeah, that's why they're called scooty. Yes. Yeah. Must be. A, must be some Queensland uh, terminology. <laughs> yeah, well, I, yeah, they well, were called I'm... scooters and mopeds. I think I've mm. heard them called both. It's confusing when the kids ride scooters too, though. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so we've got moped shops up here. Like, hire them out for the whole day. Like, there's one up in Surfers that you must have, I don't know, 50 of them. And, yeah, you just go oh, and hire them. And... I've never heard of being called that before. Yeah, well, apparently they're popular up well up here anyway because you don't need a... Along with the mini mokes. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of those around, but you don't need a, a uh, bike license to ride one. And not, is it fifty cc or something? Is that right? They've got to be under oh, fifty cc, and you don't need a license up there. That might be what it is, but there's some that yeah, and so you, you just get you go in the surface, and there's all the all the you know the Japanese visitors. They're all scooting around. They're all falling off yeah. and doing. <laughs> so it can be a bit crazy, but that's what happens in surface. Surface is a crazy place. Um, yeah, anything? What else, Joe? About that? That looks like a pretty good well, idea. Apparently, just the only thing is that this company, Scooty, only operates. Um, from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. at night, and it plans to um, expand to Sydney and then Brisbane if everything goes well in Melbourne. So keep an eye on it. I mean, that'd be great for traffic, wouldn't it? You can, they'd be able to ride through the traffic and get you to work quicker and yeah. places quicker and everything. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, Is that know. 5 till 10 at night? Did you say? Yeah. Yeah. 5, right. yeah, 5, 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. 5 a.m. So. Yeah, p.m. at night. You're going to say 5 p.m. to 10 p.m.? Yes. Like, what? Yeah, that's right. Five PM to ten PM, isn't that that's right? Five AM. Oh, five, 5 AM in the morning to ten PM at night. Oh, right, right. That's that's a fair uh, while, then, isn't it? That's all right. Because I think um, these days, like I think it's now legal. Like bikes can weave, can't they? They can weave in and out of traffic. That's they... right. Up to up to around about thirty kilometres per hour, you can weed through traffic. Right. Yeah. I I still... mean, you can't you can't do it any faster than thirty kilometres an hour. Yeah. Have you, are you a bike rider, Joe? Yeah, I have a bike. Yeah. Yeah. What sort? It's a Virago 250. A Virago? I reckon I've seen so many bikes doing more than, you know, 30 kilometres an hour weaving. Yeah, you're probably right there too. But that's the law. The law says 30 kilometres per hour. Virago. Let's have a look. I want to have a look at one. Yeah, this is a, still a learner bike. Um, I haven't upgraded to the faster bike. But running around the city, you know what? It does me, does me, um, does me well. Economical, nice and easy to ride. Yeah, one of those. Oh, that's all right. Look at that thing. Yeah, it's a, it's a Harley lookalike. Apparently. Yeah, it's a bit. I was going to say a bit like a little bit of a chopper. Sort of, kind of. Yeah, that's all right. Cool, good stuff. Uh, all right. Uh, what else we got, Jordan? What else you got stirring up down there? I've got one I wanted to add to. Just a short one I wanted to add to Joe's story last week about yeah. the Apple card. Yeah. And, and it's not really news. It's just more of about of an opinion that someone sort of brought to brought to my attention, which kind of 
it, it's it's kind of really a bit of a waking. I didn't even think of it until I read this. It says that the Apple card, the Apple card, Apple's new digital and physical credit card is a bold brink move that reimagines credit card payments on the iPhone. What makes the move so gutsy has nothing to do with the service itself and everything to do with drawing deeper into your Apple ecosystem. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. You're following where I'm going with this. The Apple Card benefits sound immediately appealing. Apple promises security measures designed to avoid common avenues of credit card fraud. It gives you up to 3% cash back on, on visual finance trackers and blah, blah, blah. What is it that helps stay on top of your payments? Um, and there's no fees for going over your limit, using the credit card internationally or even paying off the cards late. Things that offer, uh, Things that other cards are happy to charge for you will, however, you know, get better deals with them mm. uh, trying to cut it short the world of payments isn't new to apple which launched apple pay its mobile payment system in 2014 but a full-fledged credit card backed by mastercard payment network and goldman sash whoever that is uh represents apple's cannonball uh was cannonball dive into banking in a way that will have ripple effects for for v, uh, visa google pay samsung pay and every other digital payment player um I'm going to kind of scoot down. Uh, where are we? Many owners of... Where are we? Sorry, I've lost my spot. Uh, the competitors should pay attention. Apple has an uncanny ability to leverage its cult's status to create uh, hype around products and services in a way that compels others to follow, even if they get there first. But Apple's rival phone brands that should be most concerned... Rival phone should be yeah, uh, Samsung, Huawei, and Google's Pixel, not because they may want to create their own credit cards and probably won't, but because anyone who signs up for an Apple card is essentially building or binding themselves to an iPhone for as long as they have a card. And mm. that was the kind of the point that that I stumbled onto is that with this credit card, you can't use it. You can only use it with Apple because it it uses the phone. As right. part of it, it has the, to work with the phone. It's like a two-part. The, as for the authentication side of things? Yeah. So yeah. if you're, you can only use it if you're in the Apple ecosystem. Yeah. So if you want to leave the Apple ecosystem and you've got five grand worth of debt on your credit card, mm. where, how are you going to change your Apple ecosystem? Mm. That was a big story to get through just to get to that <laughs> punchline. I'm sorry, but yeah. Um, well, just before you move on to, to that up, the next story, I was just, just as a, a side note here, it's something completely different, as always. Uh, I signed up to the Amazon Prime video through the week. I thought, oh, yeah, I'll give the 30 day free thing a shot. I don't know if anyone here's signed up to it. Uh, and I thought, okay, there's maybe a couple of shows there I'd watch and blah, blah, blah. So I signed up to it. And did you know you, you can't stream that thing to a Chromecast? And. So I thought, what's going on here? So I started doing a bit of Googling, and apparently you can't do it, and, and it's all because Google and uh, Amazon having fights, having little tiffs, so they don't they don't put the, each other's products on their platform. So isn't that crazy? So I pretty much um, just I'm not going to continue. Obviously, I'm going to cancel this to make sure the subscription doesn't renew because that's for me it's pointless. Why why wouldn't you want to be able to Chromecast it? But anyway, that's just. I've got another yeah, I remember something about that going back a car, maybe a year or so ago when YouTube wasn't allowed to go on the um, what was it the uh, the Amazon yeah buyer or whatever you right so, right yeah, they they prevented it from going on there because of something or other there was something about that so yeah that could mm. be an ongoing issue yeah well for me that's just a now it's a deal breaker like I guess if I had it started off with a well I don't know what plug how do you stream something to a TV without a Chromecast. I don't well, think. Well, I'm not sure. I haven't tried it lately, but even Optus with the Optus Sport app wouldn't allow you to do it. Now, I don't know if it allows you to do it now. I haven't tried over the last few months, but mm -hmm. even the Optus Sport app wouldn't allow you to cram cast to the TV. Foxtel was like that, but they've changed that. Uh, but I just thought something like, yeah, and I just took me by, a bit by surprise and I was a bit shocked. So anyway, cancel that one. I've got another complaint coming up soon. Uh, Jordan, what's your next story? I was just talking about the Apple one. I haven't got another one ready. That's all right. Oh, that's all right. I thought you were. Um, that was just another no, it was sideways just one about how it was the Apple ecosystem. How you kind of yes, you know, you're locked into it. So it's something to be cautioned. Yeah, careful of. I suppose if you're a Samsung user or an Android user or a or whatever, 
Mm. If you're going to go and get yourself a credit card, be prepared, be prepared to stay with Apple for as long as it takes to pay off your credit card. Now, just quickly, before I go into my next story, just uh, if, I don't know if you know, know or not, but uh, I've got a little... Uh, bugbear with my Android phone, right? Uh, it's just that when you get an SMS, it doesn't show you if they, if you've got some waiting that you haven't read. Okay, so you don't know. You've got to actually go into it to find out. But I was wondering, can you download, say, like things like an, a Samsung SMS pr- uh, program for another Android phone and run it? Can you download Samsung apps through the Play Store? Do you know? I, I actually have mine shown SMSs when there's an SMS on my phone, and I've got an Android phone. I wonder why mine doesn't do it. Yeah, it doesn't do it natively. Right. Um, you, you, you do need to use a, another sort of, another app, and I use a, a different um, launcher as well. Right, yeah. So I might have to have a bit of a poke around because I thought, you know, if you spend a 1000 bucks on a Samsung, surely they're going to give you an app that's give you a bit of a notification. Anyway, I'll have a look around. That's all right. Yeah, I'll... that was something they removed on the last on the last version, I think it was. Oh, the, the versions before that, days. I think it was available. Oh, good. What a, what a feature to remove. Good on them. Uh, now, Amazon drops cloud storage to $2 a terabyte per month. Oh, go and get yourself some of this stuff. How cheap is that? So they introduced a new tier of cloud storage that will store a terabyte of data for about $2 a month, or at, at that is equivalent, that's Australian dollars, uh, equivalent to 0. 0.002 a gigabyte. Uh, so, yes, so that's not too bad. There is a catch, though, as there normally is. Uh, the the new tier is called the Glacier Deep Archive. Now, do I have a? Uh, I don't have a picture for the. At least I do. There's the something anyway to look at. The new the Glacier Deep Archive, and it's aimed at data that's collected and immediately processed, then stored for years or decades, just in case there's no there's a need for further processing or analysis. Now, Amazon suggests financial services. Companies might fancy the service for long-term storage, such as transaction data, uh, to camera footage, security camera footage, and and the like. Retrieving your data, and the catch is, retrieving your data can be achieved in 12 hours or less. So it's not a service for those who want short recovery times, and it's also quite expensive to retrieve the data. So if you're looking at, let me, I'll, I'll calculate this out. I've got a calculator. So to retrieve this data from the the deep, what do I call it, the the, the deep archive, is let me give me a calculator. It's 0.024 per gigabyte. Well, I should be able to do that in my head, shouldn't I? But I won't. 0.24. I have 0.024. 0.024 times a thousand. So it's twenty-four dollars a terabyte. Well, that's not too bad. Twenty-four dollars a terabyte. That's all right. Uh, yeah, if you want to restore it, or eleven cents per gig. Uh, the archive, the deep archive, is available in Australia, and uh, yeah, and it's in the Sydney region. So go deep dive into that. Uh, look, I was I'd thinking, what what can I use it for? You know, uh, I don't know. Maybe that you know you get a lot of data that you want to free up from your hard drive. Maybe you got yeah, like uh, I don't know, old old I don't know documents, work stuff. You know that why just delete it? Um, and it's taken up space. Yeah, put it in the the deep archive, and there you there you leave it there for never in a day. Yes. Sounds like it's pretty cheap to to save it, but to go and get it after, I mean, you know. But it's only for stuff, I guess, that you don't really think you're going to need. Uh, and if you did, that's there. Um, you know, like I suppose, as they say, like security footy, footage, cam, camera footage. So you could, I don't know, you could just start storing all these photos. And then maybe one day, 10 years later, you might want to come and have a look at it for whatever reason. But yeah, so that's what's going on there. Like I thought about just maybe stuff like maybe, you know, just taking backups of maybe some couple of the web host servers and... I don't know, snapshot them and just chuck them in the deep deep dive for for whatever. I'm never going to need them again. If and if someone's site blows up and they want it back, well, they can pay for it. Um, so that's what that's sort of things were rolling around my head. That's what I'd be using them for. But yeah, look, uh, I think uh, further on that story said that Amazon uh, they're trying to erase the market for tape. So there must be a fair few big companies, banks, and so forth that are still using tape. And I think it looks like Amazon wants to wants that business wants to shut the tape down. So there you go. Uh, all right. Well, uh, what else, Joe? Got- um, there's this thing that in the IT industry that they call um, a honeypot, and I'm not sure whether many people are aware of it. But a uh, honeypot, uh, when it comes to IT uh, and in the IT systems, is a uh, a trap that IT pros lay for hackers, 
hoping that they will interact with it and um, in such a way that it provides them useful intelligence or information. Um, there's a couple of different ways that they do that. And uh, one of them is called uh, the Pure Honeypot, mm -hmm. which is a physical server uh, set up in such a way as to lure in attackers. Uh, special monitoring software keeps an eye on the connection between a honeypot and the rest of the network. Uh, it, because of the fully fledged machines, they make for um, more realistic looking type, type of targets for hackers to attack. Right. The, but the risk is that the attackers could actually infiltrate that system <laughs> um, and then use the honeypot as a staging server for other attacks. Right. <laughs> so, uh -huh. so there's a risk in using that type of setup. Look, as smart as your hacker is, or as smart as your IT professional is, there's a, just a smarter hacker out there, eh? There just always oh, yeah. is. Yeah, look, for sure. I mean, this is only to keep the honest people out. I mean, someone who's who's not so honest will, will, will easily infiltrate a system. They'll find the weakest spot and they'll just infiltrate it. Mm. Um, there is another type of uh, honeypot that's, that's going around, and they call it the high-interaction honeypot. It uh, uses a virtual machine to keep potential um, compromised systems isolated from everything else. There's a, a, a multiple of virtual honeypots that can be run on a single physical device. <laughs> and this makes it easier to scale up uh, multiple honeypots and to sandbox them if something goes wrong. Yeah, so, right. you know, if someone gets into part of a system, they can, honey, um, they can try and steer them a certain way with these honeypots uh, sandbox them as they call it um, then once they work out what they've done with it they can restore it and then they can try again so i wonder if uh is it say legal or is it right say then say i don't know i just sony that sony hack came to mind so say there was a, a system set up to look and feel like say sony to entice the hackers in uh, i wonder like if, if once they're in and the then sony sort of hacked back sort of thing to find out more about them which is essentially what this honeypot sort of thing does uh, i wonder if that's like illegal you know it's like to to set something up for entrapment uh, i don't think so because apparently these um there's a team of controllers there's a team of controls the honeypot can watch the um the techniques that the hackers use um, to infiltrate their systems and they can then escalate privileges like they can okay so they came in through here so what we'll do is we'll escalate this privilege on this particular device and change the um, authentication on this particular device mm. yeah, okay. um, there's different, different type of honeypots used by uh, different organizations you know security companies have got them uh, academics government agencies uh, looking to examine particular threat on uh, a landscape uh, their creators may be interested in learning what sort of attacks are out there. So they set up a honeypot, mm. um, getting details on how specific kinds of attacks uh, work or even trying to lure a particular hacker into a particular area of the honeypot so that they can find out its source, where it's coming from. Did you uh, have any examples of what, how, what the honeypot, uh, uh, a real world honeypot, how it was used? I don't have an example here. This is just a uh, sort of like a, a brief understanding on what honeypots are for people who, who are not familiar with them. Because I found, I found one while you were talking, if you're interested. Okay, yeah, do tell us, yeah. Yeah, there was, uh, in 1986, there was one called the Cuckoo's Egg. And um, uh, uh, it was at the UC Berkeley sysadmin place. They tried to track down an apparently erroneous charge for 75 cents for use of a Unix system. Um, in the process, they discovered that someone was dialing into the system and had managed to gain super user access. They implemented two honeypot-like defense, defenses to track down the hacker. He, he attached borrowed terminals to all 50 incoming phone lines over a long weekend and waited for the hacker to dial in. Once he realized that the hacker was looking for information on nuclear defense secrets, he created an entirely fictitious department at, at LBL, supposedly working on the Star Wars missile defense system in order to lure the hacker into spending time there. Eventually, the hacker was arrested and revealed to be a West German working for KGB. So that's pretty full on. Uh, there's another quick one here. Uh, was an incident in 1990 when a hacker attempted to break into AT&T Bell Labs and steal its password file. Internet pioneer Bill Cheswick 
working for the Bell Labs at the time, led the attack on what he called a merry chase. Though some ad hoc honeypot systems to trace his location and learn his techniques, he, yeah, and then the, his write up was in the an evening with Berriford was was extremely influential. But yeah, so uh, that's interesting, Joe. Yeah, that's a good topic. Yeah, it is. I mean, you know how earlier on in the year I was talking about the software Splunk. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, apparently they they use software like Splunk um, as a security tool that can take the information from these honeypots. Um, and there's more details on the links um, that we will provide in the show notes as well. So if you want to, you can actually see what type of software that's being used. Um, you can see um, also if you want to set up your own honeypot, there's a little link there that shows you how you can set up your own little honeypot if you want to set one up at, in your business or in your uh, organization mm. somewhere. Yeah, interesting. Have you, yeah. Got a, have you got a honeypot, Jordan? No, many years ago I did. Yeah, right. What... Had, um, well, kind of, so to speak. It was a, a feature that was built into a mail server I was running, and it used to just spam, used to get sent to the honey spot, to the honey pot, and the honey pot would then learn all about those spams and what, what their tasks were and what they did and then what was bad about them, so to speak, and then it would learn how to combat them, whether it blacklisted them or repaired them or whatever. Right. It oh, okay, Final. interesting. Yeah, interesting. Now, um, look, I know you've got to go soon. It is the end of the show as well. So just tell us when you're when you've got to take off, and we'll we'll end up because we're just about there anyway. Um, I reckon we'll hit it when I reckon we'll hit it when when it's finished. Or it can be right. All right. Well, I'm just going to ask you because you've got a, you've got one more. I think about uh, what have you got? Inbox is dead. Then that's one of those Google things. Oh, that was just a quick one saying that yeah, Inbox is officially closed this week. Oh, yeah. Right, yep. You know the Inbox app on your phone? Oh, well, well, Inbox app is officially closed. Geez, another, Google, another Google killed product. That'll be in the cemetery. It only lasts about two and weeks. There was, just, there was just people here that were recommending some other apps that you can use instead um, that will kind of do the same categorizing that the Inbox did in the Google email app. Mm. Um, but there is another Google email app, I think it was called... Um, so I haven't got it in front of me. I'm looking at a completely different article, scrolling through it. Um, so that it was there's still that there's still the normal Google, oh the Gmail app. That's still going. So there's it's still the Gmail app, but the Inbox app. It was two different apps. They looked the same. Right. Yeah. The yeah Inbox. There. There it is. There. It's got its own little so tombstone. People are saying to try Spark. Which oh. Is what? Right. And another one was called. I think there was another one called something, something blue. Is there another Spike, one called blue? Spike, and Spark. There were two, I think. There was something called Blue. Um, yeah, there's another one called something blue, which I used for a short period of time. Look, I try. I've been using the Outlook by Microsoft, and because you know, I I do try and and like Microsoft. I, I, I really do. I recommend Nine. Well, I think I've talked about it before. But this is just one of the one of the the many frustrations that I, I get is that, say, you use an Outlook, okay, you download the Outlook app for your phone, you think, yeah, well, yeah, cool, lovely, beautiful, that's what, you know, that's Outlook on your phone. So then I was talking to Paul, he's been on the show before, I saw him on Tuesday. not as very good, Tuesday, not very good. And uh, Paul said uh, to me, you try and print from that Outlook app. You can't print from the Outlook email app. You try and add contacts to your Outlook contacts online from your yeah. phone and it can't do it. Yeah, it's so bad. So what? What one can only bring the contacts down from the Microsoft servers. It can't add contacts up to the Microsoft oh. servers through the contact system built into the phone. It can't do it. It's so so bad, isn't it? Really? Yeah, what it are is. they doing? That's why I bought Nine. Nine is about fifteen dollars, and it's worth every penny. And they've now added IMAP and Pop and everything to it now as well. What? Nine. And why do you like it so much? Because it's just. It's just a bee's knees of, of apps to do emailing in apps. Like it does everything from Microsoft accounts. So it'll make your um, contacts and everything work. Like you can have your contacts, your, your built-in contact system in your Android phone will then be able to communicate with the app and add contacts to, to, to your address book online and all those sorts of things that the, and that the Outlook app won't do because of its restrictions and rules. No. Nine does it, does the lot. Right, it's the best. It's it's clearly by far the absolute best email app I've ever used ever. Right, and does it give you? Cross, it you know, does Gmail, um, hot, email, uh, Hotmail, does all of them. IMAP um, works with Active. What do you call it? What do they call it? Um, works with um, 
works with uh, what do they call it? Act, um, exchange. Active is it active? Yeah, exchange. Sorry, exchange yeah. and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Works with everything. And which one did you like, Joe? Did you had a you had one? There was year? another one called something blue, which was an app that you install on your phone and it works pretty much like the inbox. Right. Um, you can you can you know, different companies and different yeah. uh, Gmail. Blue stuff. mail, it's called. I, mail, I, I yeah. tried it and I didn't like it. That's when I tried nine. I couldn't yeah, okay. get blue mail to work. No matter how hard I tried, I could not get the contacts and everything from Outlook to synchronize. It just would not work. Yeah. That's nine's the only one that did. I might have a look at those. Uh, but look, I settled with... I, I, I did try another one. I don't know what it was. Uh, My Mail, I think. But I, I went back to Outlook because at the end of the day, you think, well... Well, who is who are these third party people reading my mails you know so i went back um but look let me end on i think everyone else is, is look everyone... you know blue mail might be right now i don't know it's been a while since i've tried it, it joe's probably been more recent on it than me so yeah well it looks like it's been on telly so <laughs> it's a picture of them on telly so there you go must be all right yeah i might have a look at that one. Have a look at both of them now um i think everyone you guys finished with your stories this week i only had a, a quick one about um apple computers Yep. Um, I could probably do it kind of a kind of br- briefly go through it. Apple announced last week it would no longer be released uh, be releasing AirPower, its long awaited wireless charging pad. The oh. company the company apologized saying it concluded AirPower will not achieve a high standard and we cancelled the project. Um, blah 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 blah. Over the past years Apple has released three generations of laptop computers that have been plagued with keyboard issues. The company is facing multiple class action law, uh, class action lawsuits, even tinkering with keyboard design multiple times. The buyers can buyers have uh, continued to experience keys and, and stuck and become blah 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 blah. I think they're just kind of saying that Apple's cancelling that project and why didn't you continue on with some of the others? Mm. Um, I could theoretically take him, take him to an Apple store and get blah, blah, blah. No, I can't do it quick enough for you, mate. All right. Um, no worries. I was just, while you were talking. Wait, wait. There is also iMac Pro released in 2017. Yeah. Oh, there's all. Oh, yeah. There's also the iMac Pro released in, in late 2017, which is less upgradable than the old standard iMac and any changes need to be made to the Apple, blah, blah, blah. What they're kind of saying there is that there was supposed to be another... <laughs> Was it supposed to be another iMac that was supposed to come out in 2018 and it's 2019? Now, a MacBook Pro desktop is what they're talking about. In two, it was supposed to come out in 2018 and it didn't and it's 2019 now and Apple has just uh, had a spring launch event with no information. Yeah, they're saying... Um, trying to, I'm trying to refresh my memory. They're just saying that Apple's saying that with all the money they're making from their new TV um, and online services and that sort of stuff that they've kind of lost interest in their hardware. It's yeah. just somebody having a bit of a whinge. Yeah, it so. sounds like. Look, hardware, I think that's where Apple make their money. They're not going to ditch the hardware anytime soon. But now right. they've got these new TV services. They're saying that, you know, why haven't we got the new desktop computer that was supposed to be out last year? Mm. Well, I suppose going down that path, I suppose that's sort of true, isn't it? Like, that, what are computers these days for the majority of people? They're just, just devices that hook into the internet. That's all it is. Yeah. What what do you do on a computer apart like you break your day down and what do you do on a computer that's not on the internet? Yeah, well, there's more people, there's there's more in this article about them saying that they believe Apple's pushing everyone to use iPads and mm. and phones and things like that rather than actually utilizing the desktop. Well, I'm going to finish uh But this... I don't think the desktop could ever die. I, I think no. it will be no. I th- doesn't matter how large a scale it's on. I think it's it's you know Mm. Well, I'm, I'm going to end on a whinge <laughs> for something different. Uh, Kogan, oh God, Kogan again tops consumer complaints list. So the New South Wales Department of Fair Trading is named Kogan the state's most complained about company after its new monthly complaints register for February 2018. Well, they haven't got number one for April yet because that's coming maybe tomorrow for me. Kogan produced 17.5 percent of all complaints. Uh, they registered 72 complaints in February. Uh, Apple registered 36, Samsung 43, JBI Fi uh, 16, LG 16. So a score of 70 or 72, uh, which Kogan received uh, in January and February, respectively, apparently, uh, seldom achieved by any company. So you've got a high level of complaints. Now, I think I think people are starting to wise up. Like I thought Kogan was okay. I, I did give him a bit of a chance. I've heard a lot of complaints about oh, from look. actual people, not from reading articles, just from friends yeah. and family who have had so much trouble with it. Look, I, I, I'll, 
I've, I was thinking about this this morning, actually. I'll tell you why I've got a beef with them in a sec. But uh, I was thinking about it this morning. I'm thinking, you know, I, I think if I was going to buy anything that's worth more than $100, I would just I would not, again, go and look at Kogan. Maybe I might even bring that down to 50 So pretty much you're not going to buy nothing from them. Um, now, what happened was I bought some cameras from them, like some security cameras, I think, uh, a little while ago. But anyway, uh, 12 months... 15 months later, the thing broke. The recorder, the hard drive PBR thing broke. And uh, so anyway... I've done that. Yeah. So anyway, so I rang him up. <laughs> so I rang him up. Well, I paid good money. It was um, 800 bucks or something. It was, really? Yeah, for Swan. It was rapid. Oh, I bought a Swan one as well in the end. I went to JB and got one because I got sick of the cheap internet ones. Yeah, no, I got and the... I've had no problem. It's been going for... Two years now. Well, anyway, so I've only had a problem when something breaks, right? Because now, because then you can't phone these people. You can't phone Kogan. You cannot talk to them. Uh, you send them an email on through their complaints resolution center. It takes a week to get back to you. And uh, so that's frustrating in itself. So I finally got on to them, you know, ranting and raved. And they said, okay, send it back to us. So I sent it back to them. And then like a month goes past. And so I ring him up. Oh, I can't ring him up. I emailed him. And I said, what's going on? Have you... What what's the answer? Because I give you this uh, little timeline of where your item is, and then and it was very confusing at the start. Uh, it said something awaiting dispatch and in transit, then at the solution center or something. And I thought, well, after a month after I sent it, I thought, well, okay, I'm reading that wrong. So they they must be waiting for it. I thought it was in transit from from here to Taiwan or somewhere, you know, where they're going to actually fix it. So anyway, nothing happened. So I rang him up, and they go, oh, we haven't got it. We didn't get it. What are you talking about? We haven't got it. I emailed them. We haven't got it. We didn't get it. Blah, blah, blah. And I went, well, thankfully, I spent $3 to get the bloody receipt. You know, the, the whatever you call it, the acknowledgement of delivery. So I said, ha ha. So I sent that to them. I, I told them, I said, it's been a month since you've received it. And then this was on the 28th of March, right? So the guy writes back and said, yeah, we received it on the 31st of March. <laughs> Three days after in the future. <laughs> I tell you, fair dinkum. And so anyway, I said, okay, so seeing that you operate in the future, when can I have it back? And uh, he goes, uh, you'll be notified when it when it's when we assess it. And that was it. And that was it. That's now probably a week ago. So it's just hopeless. It's just dead set hopeless. I've been without this thing for when did it die? I think just before Christmas. It's hopeless. So I've learned my lesson. And uh, old Ruslan, I'd, uh, I'll find it very, very hard to uh, go back and uh, buy anything of substance from you again. So I think that's why you're heading the complaint list. But anyway, that's my little whinge <laughs> for today. Um, all right. Anyone else got any whinges or we, we're right? We're out of here? No, no, yeah. right. <laughs> good. Have you had any bad experiences with Kogan, Joe? Or any good experiences? I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but I've had like, nothing but good experiences from Kogan. Have you had anything that broke? No. That's why I've had a good experience. <laughs> We've had more luck with gear best. Yeah, well, yeah. I think it's just look that this look the stuff comes. It, it comes and uh, it's good. But if something is wrong, remember that phone that blew up in my daughter's face, or the power supply they sent with it. If something goes wrong, there's a problem, and uh, life's too short for these problems. So I'm out. Mm. Uh, all right, uh, cool. All right, thanks, Joe. Thanks for coming in. No worries, see you later. Uh, we'll see you uh, next week, hopefully, uh, bright and bubbly. And thanks, Jordan. Thanks for coming in. Yep. You got the you got a very good picture there tonight. I don't know what's happened uh, to your camera. But so I must just be glowing. I'm probably pregnant. Oh, maybe. Look out. I think the young ones did an episode of Vivian was pregnant one, I think. Anyway, enough oh, of that. Go and watch it. the young ones. <laughs> Gosh, I love that show. It's one of my faves. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, and I uh, hope your footy team wins uh, this week. All right, cool. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye.